this is Liz Katz, and today I want to talk to you about the death of YouTube. I know, yes, YouTube still gets a bazillion views, like, every day. People go there, I go there myself, we watch things, kids don't watch TV anymore and just watch YouTube. So, what the heck am I talking about when I say YouTube is dying? Well, YouTube is dying. It's not so much the audience is dying, it's not that the content itself is dying or going downhill. It's that the dream that has been YouTube for the past, I don't know what, six, seven years, is dying. Originally YouTube was created, it was a place which just had a lot of random stuff. People would just upload random stuff, that's how vlogs are created. Cat videos, just upload everything random. People started doing more entertainment things too, higher quality content, a lot of it went up. And with that came fan bases and created YouTube celebrities. And with the creation of YouTube celebrities came some very clever people who were like, hmm, how do we market on these audiences that these, most of them kids, some of them adults, but that these people who would otherwise not have any audience or probably career, how do we market on this audience? And you know what they did? They created these YouTube networks. So you had Maker, which was bought by Disney, Full screen, cinema. So then the dream of people who like want to be on YouTube is kind of the same of people who want to be in movies. They want to get signed to a network. Now, I don't know the end goal in their mind for that because getting signed to a network didn't like guarantee that you were going to be able to go in, use the network facilities, be able to go and film and have a budget. But some of them, especially the more popular channels, they did. They got that. And as the networks got bigger and bigger, the companies themselves got bigger and bigger and then they started adding the uh, brand departments where they got to go and take advertising. So then these people, you got Joe Schmo who's just there talking about himself for, and uh, vlogging his kids soccer games, getting millions of views for each video and their company behind him that represents him going and speaking with brands and getting brand deals for him, coming forward with brand deals, what they can do for them and him getting paid out large sums of money for this. Which is great, it's like for everyone that was on YouTube that was like the dream to be able to do that and make money that way because on YouTube you don't really make a ton of money from the content itself. Unless you're one of the giant content creators with the largest fan bases, you are not making a ton of money. And even with that, you're not making as much as you, the audience right now, probably think that they're making. So all the money comes from these brand deals. Now, for those of you who actually know me, I am a cosplay model. I have done some on YouTube too, but I've never considered myself a YouTuber. And for me, I've had brand deals and sponsorships as well, but it's different. I do not have this service behind me, this machine pushing deals my way, negotiating things. It's me. I go, I contact companies when I want to work with them again and again and again and again. Everyone I want to work with, I keep hitting them up. I build relationships with companies that I had already worked with so I could try to get more work with them. And it's a little different. But now with the YouTube thing, they were making a ton more money. What I could negotiate on my own and felt was fair was a teeny tiny fraction of what someone else on your negotiate, especially people on YouTube. Like a brand deal for me, like a brand deal for me, let's take when I was working with G2A, I was getting a fairly good response on everything I was doing and it ran like, um, what, over the course of six months? And over the course of six months, you know, I got a sum of money and it was a decent sum of money for me, but my boyfriend, who at the time worked for a Disney's maker, if he got a brand deal, his stuff didn't get like any views unless he put ads to it or the company put ads to it. And he was making like 20, 30 times what I was making and he'd make it all in one go. It wouldn't just be six months of work. And you can see, especially since there was no reach there, how much money was being wasted. And what he was getting too was only a fraction of what the network behind him was getting. So there was a lot of money being wasted by brands here into YouTube. Now that itself wouldn't even be enough for brands to kind of back off. They're used to wasting money. The other huge issue here is the risk. We as influencers carry much more risk than your typical run-of-the-mill, you know, celebrity of any status. 
because we're kind of, we go rogue, we do. We do our own thing, we say things, and some of us might not, some of us might play by the rules better, but others of us, we kind of just, we're people. We are definitely more real. We like to talk to our fans, to our audience, and not just talking in general with an audience, which is what your, um, your average celebrity does, unless they also have a social media presence where they are talking to you too direct. That means that we are a lot higher risk of doing something that, you know, a brand might like, not like. And I've worked with brands which are pretty much cool with anything, though. For me, it's mostly gaming companies, and uh, I don't really work for your kid-friendly brands, or, you know, my boyfriend's work for, like, NFL, and, like, Windex, and M&Ms, and none of that nonsense or Johnson and Johnson and Procter and Gamble whatever the hell the other friends are but these are the type of deals people were getting especially on YouTube and being driven there it's going away for them and that being the case that means that these big massive networks too who have been getting funding over the years over and over again different rounds like I said Maker just sold to Disney they probably aren't going to last that much longer. Maker is being completely folded into Disney. Disney, I don't think, knows why they bought it. And so many content creators who were, you know, signed are being dropped. The dream is gone. Now, if you want to use YouTube, though, as it was meant to be used, to just put out content, talk to your fans, maybe still build a fan base, and you can still make money, but you're going to be doing it on your own then yes, YouTube's very much alive and it probably will be for a long time. But if you were expecting to get on YouTube, get picked up by a network, and all of a sudden get the easy street to being rich, that's dead. It's not gonna happen. Make sure you subscribe for more of my rants and stuff. Hopefully more stuff and less rants. And leave a comment and let me know what do you think about the state of YouTube as, you know, a business for YouTubers. Thank you so much for watching. You guys rock, and I'll see you later. Bye.